Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Muthoot Finance Limited 3Q FY24 earnings conference call hosted by Nirmal Bang Institutional Equities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Vati Pandit from Nirmal Bang Institutional Equities. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Thank you, Vico. A very good evening to everyone. On behalf of Nirmal Bang Institutional Equities, we welcome you all to the 3Q FY24 Earnings Conference Call of Mutus Finance Limited. We are pleased to host the senior management of the company represented by Mr. George Alexander Mutus, Managing Director, Mr. Alexander George Hultam, Director, Mr. George M. Alexander, uh, whole time director, Mr. George M. George, whole time director, Mr. George M. Jacob, whole time director, Mr. Epen Alexander, executive director, Mr. K. R. Bijimon, executive director, and Mr. Omin K. Mamen, chief financial officer. I now hand over the call to MD Sir, Mr. George Alexander Mutut, for his opening remarks, post which we can have the floor open for QA. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good evening uh, to all of you. This is George Alexander, Managing Director. Uh, thank you for all participating in this conference call. Uh, we just uh, concluded our board meeting and uh, most of the directors are here in this room itself. And uh, performance highlights for the nine months, <clears throat> the nine months which ended in December 31st, we have an increase in the consolidated Loan AUM of 27% year on year, which now stands at 82,773 crores. As far as the standalone loan, loan assets and the management, it has grown by 23% and stands at 71,182 crores. The gold loan AUM has also increased 22% year on year, uh, by increased by 12,397 crores. The consolidated profit of the tax has also increased by 23% year on year and now stands at 3,285 crores for the nine month period. The standalone profit of the tax has also increased 16% year on year and for the nine months stands at 2,993 crores. As far as the subsidiaries are concerned, Bellstar has increased its AUM at 65% year on year and which now stands at 88,835. The loan disbursement has also been for the year on year, it is gone up by 85% and it stands at 6,776 crores. The profit after tax has shown an increase of 382% year on year, which now stands at 235 crores for the nine month period. Mutut Home Finance has an increase in loan assets and the management of 26% year on year and now stands at 1,783 crores. The loan disbursement has also increased by 493 crores. There is an increase in the profit of the tax which now for 13, 13 crores for the nine month period. Mutut Money has shown an increase in the loan assets and the management 179% year on year, which now stands at 818 crores. The total uh, revenue has also gone up to 82 crores, and the profit after tax is rupees 3 crores, as against the loss of 3 crores last year. Asia Asset Finance, the Sri Lankan subsidiary, has shown an increase in profit after tax, at, and now stands at Sri Lankan rupees 9.7 crores, and the branch network has also increased to 80 percent. We have been we have opened 487 new branches by the group in the nine month period. We have raised 480 crores to the 33rd public issue of secured renewable non convertible ventures this quarter. And we have also received the company and the group has received multiple industry recognitions too in this period. Uh, 
I think uh, with that, uh, in opening remarks, I would like to conclude here and uh, open the house for, open the, open it for question and answers and uh, clarification. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rajiv Mehta from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, congratulations on a good performance. So my first question is on uh, gold on yields. So there is a marginal uptake of 15 basis points on sequential basis. So is it completely driven by NPL reduction or is there any positive impact of some change in customer segment mix or any uh, product rate increases taken in the quarter? Uh, being a short-term loan, it is quite useful for such fluctuations. Uh, you know, if you see, it's not a substantial fluctuation. Just a, as you said, it's only a, you said 15 basis points. Okay. And uh, could you share the quantum of auctions and quantum of settlements uh, done in the quarter? Uh, auctions will be about uh, 360 crores for the quarter. 380, 381 crores. 381 crores for the quarter. For the quarter. And uh, any settlements that we would have, uh, you know... Uh, we don't do any settlements. Okay. Okay. And just last thing, uh, we see a slight dip in new customer addition and old customer reactivation on sequential basis. That number is slightly dipped in this quarter. I see that as a seasonal feature also. But uh, is it also the impact of uh, the reduced advertisement and publicity uh, expenses in the quarter? <laughs> uh, no, no, I don't think it is because of that. Some of these things are seasonal also, but there has been an increase in customer addition. But uh, probably, as you said, as you said, the, the again the number is not that significant. You know, September quarter the number was three lakh sixty thousand. Uh, this quarter it is three lakh thirty four. So you know, it's quite usual in a and there is a huge churn in the portfolio. So we deal with about fifty five lakh customers. So it is. But you should for such fluctuations. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for answering my questions and best of luck. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mona Ketan from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Good evening. So, firstly, uh, you know, just referring to the ART sale we had last quarter. So you had mentioned about some, uh, you know, uh, uh, 200 to 300 crores of recovery during Q3 itself when the last call happened. So where does it reflect in the PNL? So, uh, no, when we do an ASA sale, uh, no, we uh, uh, we get uh, we invest in a security receipt uh, in the proportion of 85 and 15 percent. So. They won't be invested in security receipt. It's coming as a part of investments. Okay. So uh, the uh, the recoveries that you had will now be reflected in uh, 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 you know in interest income as uh, no in the in the investments. It comes as a reduction in the investments and you uh, know when it is completely exhausted, it comes as an What we can. Uh, more than the investment will come as interest. Okay, it will come in the interest income. So some of it is reflected in the interest income itself. No, that's not what we said. So uh, when what? when the investment, when the security receipt completely becomes zero, what do we get? Or and above the uh, security receipt, we have to treat, uh, we can treat it as an income. Till that time, we cannot treat this as an income. Okay. So we have not had any income from that uh, in this quarter, or how? Correct. Yes, Correct. you are right. You are right. But is anything expected uh, in the coming quarters or something? Definitely, definitely. We have around 280 okay. crores outstanding. We hope to recover that in this uh, quarter. If it is completely recovered, then probably 
we might uh, see an income otherwise it might come in, in the first quarter of next year got it got it that's clear okay because limited amount was recovered it could not be only the deduction has happened from investment book Correct. and nothing no benefits in the pnl yeah. sure got that secondly uh, uh, on the uh, can you share the breakup of your loan book based on ticket size uh, less than 1 lakh and above 3 lakh so there's not not material change in the proportion uh, i think uh, uh about 3 lakhs continues to be 27 percentage uh between 1 lakh and 3 lakh continues to be 38 percentage and uh, the rest 35 percent is less than uh, 1 lakh got that okay and uh, uh just one more thing so uh, if i have to understand the attrition levels at muthoot Uh, uh could you give some color as to what is it today and what was it say uh, a few years back maybe 3 to 4 years back thank you that's all from my side so attrition maybe uh, after the covid etc or during the covid attrition is high prior to that it was slow now i think they're almost getting back to the pre covid level Okay, got that. So it's it's back to the normalized levels pre-COVID. Yeah, almost not, almost. Got that, sir. Thank you so much. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhijit Tibrol from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, congratulations on good results. So first question uh, on on this uh, yeah, he said transaction that you've done. Uh, in the notes to your financial statements, you have said that the outstanding value of the S R receipts have declined from 595 crores last quarter to about 2228 or 230 crores as on December. <clears throat> so, sir, if you could just explain, I mean, uh, how how is this working? I mean, essentially, when the A R C goes ahead and does the auctions, or when you do the auctions. it will reflect as a decline in the sr receipts is it yeah so uh, the collections we get uh, you know uh, goes to reduce the srs and finally when the srs becomes uh, uh, zero uh, any any amount collected or, uh, uh, after that becomes an income for us uh, but uh, you know uh, the collections are not actually coming through auctions primarily it is coming through uh, repayment of loans by customers yes. Not to auction. Got it. So, so this decline from 595 crores of SR last quarter to about 230 crores of SR as on December is predominantly coming from collections and or basically customers coming and repaying their loans. Yes, it is predominantly done to help the customers to give them little more time to relieve their loans. Now, now as you said, 200 crores of your loans of customers came back, redeemed their gold. And they were saved from auction. That's the biggest advantage of the ARC transaction. Otherwise, we should have had to auction those goods. So customers are definitely happy, very much benefited also. Three six thousand. Mm-hmm. Yes, please. Mm-hmm. So, like you said, whenever this this outstanding SR receipts become zero, at that point in time, whatever extra is collected will be classified as income. Because from what I recall. This ARC transaction last quarter was done at par, so you received the entire principal. Yes. Got it. And sir, one more question that I had was on the borrowing cost uh, this quarter. Around given that you had also raised from uh, uh, public NCD, uh, I think I mean the cost of borrowings have not gone up, but otherwise this risk weight circular that came in. I mean, most of the other gold lenders seem to suggest that banks are reaching out uh, and increasing the the cost, the lending rates, at least on the incremental lending that they are doing. This quarter, I see our bank term loans are actually declining sequentially, so maybe it's not impacted as much going forward. How are you looking at cost of borrowings, particularly, I mean, borrowings from banks? So uh, right now, the borrowing cost, uh, as of December quarter. It is around uh, 8.55. I think we are more heading towards uh, nine, uh, so probably 
you know, in the next six months, I think we should, you know, we might see moving towards nine unless there is some declines happening in the general interest rate scenario. Got it. Essentially, bank borrowing costs can convert from 8.55 now towards 9 percent, which is the incremental cost of borrowing. Yeah, but it can happen, and maybe only over the next three to four months. Got it. And so my last question was again on Bellstar. I mean, very good growth, very strong growth. I would say that we are seeing in Bellstar today. Um, so two things. I mean, looking at the environment today. I mean, are you not a little anxious about such strong growth, 65% kind of a YOI growth, not on a very small base? That is the first part of the question. And the other one is, I mean, last maybe four quarters you were seeing a continuous improvement in asset quality. This time there's a minor deterioration of about 40 basis points sequentially. So any geography is where you've seen uh, this this deterioration in asset quality? No, I think, uh, see, our base was slow. That is why you see the, the higher percentage, etc. Compared to the total uh, balance sheet size or asset size of Mutut Finance, the best of, uh, best of, uh, investment or best of loans are not significant for us. So not that significant. The 65 percent is because the they base open branches. Uh, base open branches. Two forty branches. As, branches as, as far as the NPA is concerned, we have not seen any particular uh, uh, a particular geography where something is wrong. This is just part of uh, for point four point four percent uh, this way or that way will definitely keep on happening. Got it, sir. This is useful. Got it, sir. This is useful. Thank you so much, sir. All the very best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shubran Shu Mishra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you. Uh, Sorry to interrupt, sir. May I request you to use your handset, sir? You're not audible, sir. I'm on my handset. Am I? Uh, ah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's that's yeah. Go forward. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, the first question is around the uh, loan book proportion. You gave out what is less than one less, but <coughs> within that what is less than 50,000, that's the first question. Second is what is the uh, accrued interest? Third is in the PPT, sir, I saw that we do use Paytm as uh, our uh, payment uh, services for re uh, loan repayment. Uh, uh, I know we are using other uh, fintech companies also, but what is our dependence on Paytm? And uh, uh, do we uh, plan to stop it or uh, alter that uh, relationship? Sir. Thanks. Just, just, I forgot the first one. Can you just say the remain the first one? What is the proportion of AM less than 50,000, sir? Uh, 16 percentage. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, the second one was Paytm. No, no. I hear, I hear Paytm. We also no, have no, among no. others Paytm also. I don't think it is impacting. No, no, no. We don't have any impact. Anyway, I don't think we are, uh, you know, uh, depending on any technology no, no, significantly. No. We are not depending on this Paytm. We don't have any impact on that. Uh, what was another question you asked? Accrued interest, sir? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, no, 1921. 1921. 1921, sir. Yes. No, Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raghav Garg from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just uh, two questions from my side. One is, uh, so uh, we've seen that there has been a lot of chatter about uh, stress increasing in uh, small ticket uh, personal loans. Uh, are you witnessing any such trends where customers who may have taken such loans uh, are now coming back because they aren't able to get those uh, unsecured loans uh, anymore as easily as before. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, should I ask my other questions? Or, uh, yeah. yeah, just because they're not getting a personal loan, we don't see any significant uh, 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 uptake of the gold loan. That's not, uh, is that what you meant? Yes, that's what I meant. Uh, so generally what we see is that this case, probably we have to wait some more time. Uh, if uh, it is really going to dry up, like uh, during the COVID, then there will be a big uh, demand. During COVID, personal loans, etc. initially dried up fully. So we had a, a, a good uh, demand for gold loan at that time. Probably uh, uh, we'll have to wait for some more time. If it is really drying up, then people will come with gold. More people will come with gold. Okay. Understood. 
Uh, second question is cash and investment has been increasing. So I see that in Q1 at percentage of borrowing that was I think 10, 12 percent. Uh, then 16 percent in Q2 has increased to about 18 percent. Uh, what is the comfortable level that you would like to keep and uh, would you also look to utilize some of this balance for growth in the next quarter or would you borrow more? No, I think uh, as a certain percentage, I have always been saying that you keep a certain percentage of cash and uh, uh, with you, uh, cash, etc. Because, because we are a, definitely an NPFC, we have a, a large borrowing also, or total borrowing is about around 60,000 crores. So, we have to keep a good amount of cash. So probably some of it, maybe a thousand, two thousand crores, maybe uh, see, can seem to be excessive, but then it is always uh, safer or more prudent to keep little extra cash. We know it has a uh, negative carry, but still the carry may be two, three percent carry is there, but still it gives more comfort to us. And the final question, yes, we are, as you have seen, we are seeing growth in many sectors now and keeping little more uh, cash with us and also increasing the borrowing, not uh, depending only on the cash, that should be our policy also. So we will continue to borrow and also continue to have maybe a little, little, maybe little extra cash with us. And sir, my last question, uh, in 4Q, uh, how are you looking at the OPEX uh, ratios? Uh, where I'm coming from is that uh, typically, in this quarter is when you see the management remuneration also uh, coming into the OPEX line item. Uh, uh, so, uh, any levers uh, we have to mitigate uh, that or uh, how, uh, how would you look at? Uh, it will be the, it will be the uh, same as of any other fourth quarter, sir. It will be the same as any other fourth quarter, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Shweta Daptarda from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity and congratulations on a good quarter. So just two questions. One is, um, so this, this question was asked initially. So is my observation correct that uh, this time you have seen a very strong gold AM growth? Of course, it's come on a little lower base of last year, but this has come despite your LTVs dropping from 70% to 65%. So that is very commendable. But is it that, uh, that reason why the uh, new or fresh customers have dipped or the fresh renewals have not come by? You have put too many uh, questions in the uh, not question, so many uh, assumptions in this. Anyway, uh, growth has come. Uh, LTV is actually LTV is going low because the price is the increase in the gold price. So whenever the gold price increases, the LTV uh, on the book definitely will come down from 75 to 70 to 68 to 60. That's the reason for the LTV growth. Yes, few customers are coming. And um, uh, what was the next thing you asked? No, so, so even the fresh uh, collateral has also dipped. So new loans by fresh collateral. I think when the gold price goes up, people need to bring only lesser gold for the same amount of loans. I think tonnage remains the same, on 94 tons, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah of course, uh, yes, uh, uh, the current, because when the gold price goes up, the new loans, they're, instead of bringing 50 grams, they'll bring only 48 grams. Correct, yeah. correct. That's it, for the new one. And this is churning so fast that the old one, 50 gram fellow will go and the 47 gram fellow will come inside. I think you got the point. Right, so basically the gold price has driven the gold growth largely. Largely for this You don't need to summarize like that. I said the tonnage difference is what I explained. Right, right. Also the tonnage has, has been steady, right. So then uh, how, how does the outlook look like in terms of competitive dynamics as on today? Because we have not seen much material improvement in yields as well. So the going looks similar, in similar fashion, like is it going to be as healthy as, as on today going forward? Yeah, we see. We had given a, a guidance of 15% growth for the full year for the gold loan. I think we should be able to achieve that uh, for the whole year. I think to that extent, that will be there. Competition is always there, as I have been always saying. After a while, some of these banks, etc., fatigue will set in, 
and uh, probably the uh, the focused players like Olu will come back. So we have been always keeping our our business focused on Olu. We'll continue to do that, and uh, probably uh, we will see continued growth also uh, in the same 15% fashion. Right. So, and my second question is pertaining to Bellstar. So, with this kind of strong growth again on the EUM front, so at what IRRs are we operating? And do we see, so we, we have seen the top players calibrating interest rates on the MFI side, on the MFI business front. So, how are we placed on the yield front and any such calibration uh, we are looking forward to? You see, uh, the industry actually acts as a, as a group, actually. When, uh, yeah. we, as, a, as a whole, the industry has taken a decision to recalibrate the interest, and uh, people have started doing it. We have also started doing it. What uh, the other industries, uh, the leaders in the industry does, just like that, we will also be doing I think they will also be doing it. Yeah, the, the, the SRO for uh, microfinance is very strong, actually. They have a good control on the members and uh, they also instruct what to do. And I think uh, uh, 25 is the same important. regulatory organization in the uh, microfinance is uh, quite effective strong. and strong. So I think uh, everybody uh, works in tandem. Yeah. Right, sir. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Pratik Tande from Swan Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations on a healthy growth in your gold AUM this quarter. So my question was, can you give some guidance on the growth coming in the next few quarters, let's say F5, 25, 26 maybe. Also, I would like to understand on the competitive environment. So from the banks and other gold lending NBFCs, uh, are we gaining market share from them or we are benefiting from the sector getting slowly organized? Uh, yeah, you said it right. Uh, so first of all, the growth uh, we had uh, we had guided for a growth of 15% in gold loan for the full year. I think uh, we should be able to reasonably achieve that by the end of the year. Going forward, also on the last several years, we have always been uh, uh, giving guidance of 15%. I think we will continue to do that uh, in the coming years also. The first part of the question. Second was uh, about. Uh, what was it? Second quarter? Yeah, so uh, are we gaining market share from banks and gold lending and BSCs or we are getting benefited from the sector uh, getting slowly organized? Yeah, it's not sector organized. More and more customers are now uh, going. It is not that uh, we are taking any customers from the bank or the bank is taking customers from us. See, the overall, uh, overall market for gold loan is also increasing. Definitely it's increasing because some of the banks are also, uh, although at the, not the same pace, they are also growing their whole loan book. We are also going to grow whole loan book. So it only means that the market is improving. Right. Right. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vikram Subramanian from w, MWAM. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, Hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Um, I have a couple of questions. First, on uh, margins, uh, specifically yields. Um, uh, so, uh, we've uh, reported uh, about close to 13, 14 groups of uh, uh, yield expansion through a queue. Uh, but as I remember, last quarter, due to ARC sale and the GNPA uh, uh, increase, we had uh, interest reversal and we had cited that as one of the reasons. Uh, um, uh, to have impacted yields. So is this just a reversal of that or uh, how, how should we read this or is this the is 17 and a half to 17.75, is this the new normal of yields? No, I think uh, see 17.5, uh, 17.8, 18% is what we have been having yield over the last five quarters. So it will still be around that only. 10, 15 basis uh, bits here and there. It's just because of the short term tenure of the book. Of the loop, very short term. Tenure. So sometimes 15, 20 percent bits can there. So last year it was 17.65, now it is 17.79. Previously it was 18.08. So some small change here and there, just because of the very short term nature of the loops. Um, 
fine um, uh, got it sir. so uh, my next question is on uh, growth uh, so uh, specifically on the operational parameters uh, so if i notice um, I, I, I mean a uh, gold price uh, qoq had increased about uh, 9 percentage yeah, even on an average basis it had increased about uh, 4 percent uh, between uh, 2q and 3q uh, our uh, gold loan growth is uh, still trailing at uh, two and a half percentage QOQ, and um, and this also seems to be largely value driven, and which is what we've been having value driven loan growth for almost the entire year. Um, our customer addition is still uh, trailing at one percent or lesser. Um, even if I look at average ticket size of gold loans on a, a per uh, loan account basis. Uh, that is up 15% why why so most of our growth has come from uh, this uh, I, I, I look at it the other way ltv is uh, now down to 65 percentage uh, but um, um, you know if i adjust for the gold price increase the end of period increase uh, ltv is actually gone up to 71 71 and a half percentage so uh, almost uh, the entirety of our gold loan growth uh, uh, still comes from uh, price uh, movement um, so uh, how should we look at this going forward uh, because we seem to be completely at the um, um, you know um, uh, vagaries of gold loan prices what is moving us no, I think you have used such a lot of statistics and figures five six seven seven or ten parameters of uh, growth this way that way etc anyway our gold loan business is growing our customer new customer additions is happening the AOM has gone up we are given a guidance of 15 percent for the year I think we will touch that let us remain there. On so many statistics and parameters and deductions and inferences you are good. I don't know which is all correct and which is not correct. Anyway, we are looking at the growth. Our interest comes from the growth. Our interest and income comes from the AUM only, not because of dispersal, etc. If our AUM grows, our interest will be higher. Our profit will be higher. I think we are almost trying to stick to that. Sir. Okay, okay, sir. So, and that's 15% uh, uh, growth, sir. Yeah, I think uh, last two questions I have answered like that, only, sir. Probably you will not use them. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sripal Doshi from Equiris. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, congrats on good, a uh, good quarter and. Uh, Thank you for giving me the opportunity. So my first question was pertaining to the new customer acquisition run rate. So what is it that we have in mind or that we are targeting in order to add on a monthly basis in, in the new customer acquisition uh, landscape? I think uh, we are doing a lot of uh, road, road activities. We call it uh, BTL. Uh, BTL. BTL activities. BTL activities we are doing here everywhere we are doing. And that is actually growing our customers also because the customer churn is definitely higher because the loads are very short period. So it's like a treadmill. So new customers come, they take back their gold, we have to get new customers. And that's an ongoing process for us, ongoing process for us because the tenure is very short. But then the advantage of a short tenure is that our yield, our uh, returns, our NPS, etc. will not be there. So we are always uh, in the market with activities, with advertisements also. We do advertisements also. Uh, for maybe branding, etc. And uh, uh, local activities is there in all the 5,000 branches. So that is how we keep the new customer growth. So, sir, just a follow-up question on that. Uh, have we tried to relook at or revisit the uh, key responsibility area of our employees so that, you know, this momentum on new customer acquisition can also be sort of improved or the, the the leakage that we have of the customer in terms of uh, renewable of or, or maturity of loans that can be curtailed. So have we looked at or revisited the KRS of our employees? Yeah, I think uh, this is a very operationally challenging business. The staff, etc., needs to be at the branch to take custody of the gold, control of the gold, safety, security. They have to be in the branch. At other times, we expect them to go out and do business also, but not. we don't expect them to be always outside because every day there are such a lot of walk-ins coming to the branch for new pledges, interest payment, releases, etc. So staff has to be in the branch also. Security safety also is there, but notwithstanding that, we have a marketing team and occasionally the branch people also accompany them for marketing activities. So KRA is mainly uh, their growth in the business in the branch. 
and uh, some of it also to do uh, marketing and uh, we have uh, telecalling etc. at the branch level itself. Branch level itself, a lot of customers ask them for new business, uh, ask them for interest, ask them for universe etc. Alright, so just one last question on the on the Muthut money franchise. So if we look at uh, the branch network has doubled in the last 12 months and also the AUM, uh, just wanted to get a sense uh, with respect to what does the loan book mix looks like in this uh, in, in this subsidiary of ours. Uh, sir, the loan book today is about 800 crores. So the branches have also the increased, the loan book is also increasing. The loan mix like versus like of gold loan and vehicle loan in that category in that we have in that. a healthy mix of gold loan and vehicle loans. It's a normally a vehicle loan company, but we have also started gold loan because uh, gold gives better uh, income also and uh, uh, and shows a better quality of something. So we do a mix of both. All right, sir. Thank you and good luck, sir, for the next quarter. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants. To ask a question, please press star and 1 on your touchstone telephone. Our next question is from the line of Kushan Parik from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. I just had a couple of questions. One, uh, just a data keeping question. Could you uh, tell us what the auctions were for the September quarter, uh, the auction amount? And uh, also, uh, if I could just uh, put my second question as well. Uh, basically, uh, how should we think about uh, in loan spreads and margins going forward? Uh, given that uh, uh, we're uh, uh, we're saying that cost of funds could increase from 8.55 to 9 percent over the next one two quarters. Uh, uh, I mean, will uh, uh, will we be uh, increasing our uh, yields to also uh, sustain our margins? Yeah, <clears throat> the yield has been hovering around 18%. So 18% plus or minus 15 bits, 20 bits is what we have been seeing in the last five quarters. So the yield may remain like that. Although uh, the CFO said that the uh, cost of funds may go, that is for incremental cost of borrowing. But overall probably we, we may not expect it to reach near the 9%, but a little more only. It will nearer to, not up to 9%. So some of it, Probably we will be able to make up with uh, better operation ex operation cost reduction, etc. But uh, probably we may not uh, be thinking of increasing our uh, uh, rates, etc. unless the cost of borrowing goes up substantially. We will be able to maintain our uh, need money. Uh, got it, sir. And, and the uh, auction for September quarter, the auction uh, number? For December quarter, it is 381. December 381. And the September quarter, sir? Coming, coming, coming. Hold on, hold on. 236 close. 236. 276. 236. 236. 236. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. That's, that's all for me. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jigar Jani from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thank you for taking the question. Just one clarification. Uh, the incremental cost of borrowing, bank borrowing is 9%, right? That is what uh, you mentioned, right? It can come up to 9%. It can come up to 9%. Okay, okay. And uh, currently, uh, it is uh, on a blended basis, what would be the incremental cost of borrowing? That's what 8.55, no? For December quarter. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So 8.55 is the blended as well as the uh, incremental uh, cost of money. Okay. And sir, uh, can you just repeat the accrued interest number? Sorry, I missed it. 1921. 1921. 1921. 1921. And sir, uh, uh, this corresponding to the previous participant, you had earlier guided for a 9 to 10% that kind of spread range. Uh, is that maintained over uh, the guidance? Yeah, I think uh, no, this quarter uh, it is uh, 9.24, right? 9.24. Yeah. yeah, so we will be near the, within this range even after the rate increase, cost of borrowing increase that we might yeah. do. We'll try to maintain that. We'll try to maintain that. Okay, okay. Thank you so much for answering the question. Thank you. So much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajiv Mehta from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, sir. Just two questions on Melstar. Uh, can you give some outlook on Melstar's credit cost? And if you can also share the stage two number for Melstar as of December and as of September. Stage two or stage three? Stage two. Stage three is 1.9%. Stage two. Stage two it is 1%, 1.03%. Okay. And uh, what will be the outlook on trade costs? Because we have seen a sharp jump in, uh, you know, par 90, 90, I mean, uh, stage three numbers and provisioning has also gone up. Uh, do you expect it to stabilize in this quarter or normalize a bit? In fact, J3 has come down compared to last year. No, on Q1Q basis. Ah, Q1Q. Uh, not on Q1Q basis. I think, oh, yeah. okay. yeah, I think it, is, it is stabilizing. It is stabilizing in January. It is better. Okay. Okay. Got that. Oscar funds or uh, credit costs? Credit costs. Credit costs. Okay. So, in Q4, uh, the early trends are that it is stabilizing, right? Yeah, yeah it is stabilizing. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vasu Jain from Marcellus Investment Managers Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. We can hear you. Uh, yeah, uh, Shail, can you uh, tell us something about the branch openings uh, 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 that we have done? You can see 30 branches have been opened in standalone. Uh, uh, standalone business and uh, can you share something on what is the RBI uh, seeing on further branch openings? So, uh, yeah, the, for the last year, this uh, year 22-23, uh, we opened 150 branches. Thereafter, we approached mm -hmm. RBI, uh, they gave us permission to open another 114 branches. I think that's almost complete by uh, this, Fourth quarter. this March. Uh, or maybe early April, we should be able to open that also. Further, we will again approach for, we have uh, approached for another set of branches. And that is an ongoing process. 100, 150 branches a year is what we are we are doing now. So I think it will be an ongoing process. Sir. Okay. Uh, and we do not see any problem in obtaining the approval? No, no. Uh, no, we have to uh, we have to convince the RBI. That is what our job is to see that uh, they are convinced about the company and its operations. And uh, of course, if that is so, uh, we don't see any any issues there. But it comes. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish from Infinity. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Congratulations for a good set of numbers. Uh, sir, I had one question in relation to uh, the insurance broker's entity. Uh, we've seen the operating expenses jump up significantly. Any specific reason or is there a one-off? Yes, I think it should be a one-off. And uh, what would it be in nature of, sir? I don't remember what. Nothing. Okay. Maybe we can uh, get it offline from here. Thank you. Our next question. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Kiran Engineer from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Congrats on the good set of numbers. Uh, just a couple of clarifications on uh, previously asked questions. First, we are SR book of 230 crores. If we recover, let's say, 300 crores out of it, the extra 70 goes to the ARC or to us? No, so, uh, uh, the collections are divided. So, the investment in SRs is in the proportion of 85 and 15. And the collections also are apportioned in the same basis. And collections uh, over and above the SRs get allocated in the form of 85 and 15. Of course, there is a, a certain uh, uh, gap uh, which is there for the uh, ARC. Got it. Okay, that explains it. Uh, secondly, what were do we did we have any interest reversals in this quarter, or any write backs? Last quarter it was a hundred crore reversal, if I remember correctly. 
So, if you um, look at the numbers from um, uh, September 30th to uh, and compared with the December 31st, uh, I think uh, no, the NPS have uh, declined. So, uh, no, then there is no need for an interest reversal. So, that is why you know there is a provision reversal because the NPS, uh, the EC provisions have come down. Okay, so is it fair to say that the 100 crore reversal we had in September quarter, we did not have in December quarter? That is fair to say. So, uh, no, um, uh, if you go deeper into it, there is always a reversal because it's not the same set of uh, NPS which get uh, declared. Uh, it will be, it could be a new set of customers is now shown as a NPA compared to September quarter. So the September quarter NPS would have got maybe closed or you know, major portion would have got closed, then a new set of customers. So uh, at a loan level, there could be reversals. And, okay. Okay. This is what we are talking Understood. Understood. And just lastly, on Bellstar, we've seen this uh, slight increase in NPLs. Is that because of the floods in Tamil Nadu or... Uh, how do we read this? And also, what are the uh, key states for Bellstar? Uh, Bellstar, I think, Tamil Nadu is uh, the majority. Uh, 50% is in Tamil Nadu. 50% uh, uh, is in Tamil Nadu. The rest, uh, South India, uh, other South Indian, and uh, probably... Uh, yeah, I think plus have got a small impact, but uh, I think that's what co co corrected in the month of January. That's what uh, we understand. Okay, so did I hear that bulk of the book is in South India and half of the book is in Tamil Nadu state alone? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay, okay. South Indian company. Okay, that answers it, yeah. Thank you so much and I wish you all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shubranshu Mishra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi sir, just wanted to uh, want a, a clarification on the branch opening for 24 and 25 uh, and uh, do we get any incentives uh, to open up branches in uh, left wing extremist uh, districts, uh, that's the first. Second is sir, uh, as far as my understanding we come to assignments but, uh, of gold loans because they are bullet loans but if we take monthly interest can we do uh, uh, of the gold loan, sir. Thanks. Yeah, so, first question was about uh, what should you say? Branch opening in uh, special incentive. Incentive for branch opening in which places, sir? Uh, left wing extremist district, sir. LWE. <laughs> <laughs> we have not talked about such things, sir. No. <laughs> left wing extremist. First of all, I don't know what is it, sir. Which are the states? Which are the states? Which are the states? Because some districts which fall into Telangana as well, sir, which could have a large quantity. No, I don't think there's any incentives for us there. Anyway, uh, no, for opening a branch, we do uh, risk assessments, etc. <laughs> <laughs> uh, second one was about monthly interest. What are you saying, sir? I didn't understand. Sir, if the gold loans are on monthly interest, uh, can we assign, uh, do assignment transactions for our gold loans? I think so. Uh, EMIs and uh, monthly interest will be able to. Yes. Okay. But that would be yield dilutive, right, sir, so if we do monthly interest on gold loans. That will be? Yield dilutive. Yield dilutive. Uh, no, see, you have, uh, no, whether it's, uh, no, gold loan as a product suits monthly payment uh, is doubtful, so I'm not sure how far. Uh, we have, uh, our loans are all bullet repayment and there is no EMI and monthly Commitment for the customer. It's all EMA, it's all uh, bullet loan and bullet reset. That is why customers come and take a gold loan. Anyway, it is a short term product, no? so asking customers to pay on a monthly basis, you know, how far it is accepted, uh, we are not sure. Sure, sir. Thank you. Those are my questions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. So from the management, very happy uh, that uh, we were able to present a good uh, set of numbers and extremely happy that we had uh, uh, quite a few uh, interesting questions and clarifications and uh, we hope that we have been able to clarify your questions. 
and then from our side, we will ensure that uh, the company does well and does well for not all its stakeholders, whether it's the shareholders, the lenders, regulators, everybody. That is our priority. So thank you very much for participating and uh, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Nirmal Bang Institutional Equities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.